Partly based on some of my own experiences with uh, with agoraphobia, which is something I, I kind of battled with and um, uh, struggled with in my late teens and early twenties. Um, I was uh, the victim of a, of a pretty un un unprovoked and vicious attack by a, by a gang of youths, and uh, and what it left me with was was this trauma that eventually became agoraphobia. So so um, yeah, I kind of used my my uh, my experiences with that and sort of combined it with my love of horror films and, and uh, yeah, gave birth to, to Citadel. I, I began to sketch this idea for a creature that could um, that could see fear. It was kind of based on one of the things that uh, this counsellor was, was saying to me when I was getting help for agoraphobia, um, which was, you know, this idea that, you know, your body language sort of, you know, advertises, uh, what, you know, to, to, to certain people that... Uh, you are a victim, and, and she said, you know, it's almost like they, they can see your fear, and, and uh, you know, you can walk down the worst area possible, but if it looks like you know where you're going, they don't see you. Um, and so I just thought that was a really creepy concept, you know, the idea that, that someone could see fear. And So I began to sketch this idea for a creature um, for a horror film that could, uh, that was, you know, essentially blind to the world but could see fear, you know, and, and at that stage it was very much in a sort of, you know, a predator kind okay. of sense, you know, where, where fear would stick out as a different colour. And, um, and so I guess it was kind of in conversation with other people where they'd go, you know, where did this come from or what inspired, you know, and I'd talk about my own life, that they, you know, people were saying, you should put some of that mm. into it, you know, and, and I was never sort of, you know, narcissistic enough as to think my own life was interesting enough to, to make a film about, but... I began to sort of, you know, bit by bit, more of, of, of my experiences or my nightmares and stuff started to sort of, you know, enter the, uh, enter the fore. And, and um, what I wanted to do was to sort of, you know, uh, I, I'm a firm believer in sort of, uh, you know, that you'll, you'll get a heightened experience of any given emotion. You know, the more sort of real and relatable yeah. and the more sort of... Um, I guess uh, tangible that the that the that the situation and performance is, and and so you know I kind of wanted to sort of on the one hand create something that was, you know, excuse me, a very earnest drama, you know, um, but combine that with with genre elements and yeah, James Cosmo is uh, I mean he's I mean we shot in Scotland where he's he, he's a legend yeah there and and um, he's somebody who who. You know, I've always been a great fan of, but never thought we'd get. Um, and especially when Game of Thrones started shooting in Belfast, right. I was like, you know, forget about it. But he really responded to the script and was, you know, sort of gracious enough to, you know, be shooting for three days on Thrones and then fly to Glasgow for a day and then back to Belfast. Oh, wow. Just, you know, it was amazing and sort of, you know, it's such a... a gentle giant. I mean, he's, he's like, you know, six four high in the same wide. It's just this big jovial tank and, and to sort of have him on set you know um, with his you know the, the legacy that he has and and uh, you know when you're shooting in minus 19 degrees Celsius to have someone like that on set it's, yeah, it's a huge a huge help yeah I mean you know facing your fears is, is the only way to ultimately overcome them and you can't you know the more you run and hide from them the more they, they exponentially grow you know um, but um I mean, yeah. For me, it was it was amazingly sort of cathartic, you know, to 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 make it. But you know, uh, primarily to to write it. I found the writing was by far the far the hardest uh, thing I had to do in it. You know, because uh, as I say, the shoot was so chaotic. You have no objectivity to kind of you know allow allow it to sort of uh, sink in what you're doing. But the the writing of it, you know, it took five years to get the film off the ground. So that's a lot of time. To have your mind bathing in in kind of you know scenarios you kind of rather forget you know, right. but ultimately is not a bad thing because you're forced to look at it and you're forced to re-examine it and you're forced to live in it, and I guess to be master of your own creation to to have a script that ultimately, you know, 
is a story of redemption and of hope. Um, I I felt I started to echo the the arc of the main character, you know. So by by the time I finished the screenplay, I felt yeah, it was the best form of therapy. I could yeah, yeah. Imagine, yeah.